So in this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about function orthogonality, as well as the notation I'm going to be using for the inner product of two functions, or the dot product uh, of two functions. So if you watched the last video, uh, you'll know that I, if I want to find out whether two functions, let's call them f1 and f2, are orthogonal uh, over some interval, uh, let's call it a, b, so from uh, you can think of this on the number line from a to b. All you need to do is take the integral uh, of f1 of x times f2 of x dx, and if this is equal to zero, then the functions are said to be orthogonal. So f1 and f2 are orthogonal. And we're going to be doing a lot of these integrals. Uh, don't worry, most of them are going to be zero or one. Um, but we're going to be doing a lot of these integrals and representing it like this is sort of painful. Like I don't want to have to write out uh, this full integral every single time I mean uh, take the dot product or take the inner product um, as it's called uh, for functions. And so uh, I'm going to introduce a notation. Uh, so f1 comma f2, this in parentheses, this means take the inner product. So integrate uh, from, for example, a to b, f1 of x times f2 of x dx. And you might say, well, how in this notation do we represent the interval? So what about a and b? Where did those go? And the answer is that most of the time, uh, we're going to be interested either in some obvious interval. So say uh, we've got a quantum well, and everything so we've got an infinite potential outside the well, and then we've got some range, say from uh, minus L over two to L over two. In, in that case, then the interval is just gonna be minus L over two to L over two. But in general, uh, the interval is actually going to be minus infinity to infinity. So this notation implicitly means um, take the integral over all space or all relevant space. So if your function you know is going to be zero outside a certain point, then just go from the parts where it's not, integrate over the parts where it's not zero. Now there's other ways of representing this inner product. So some people like to use, uh, for example, f1 comma f2. Um, in quantum mechanics, the most common notation uses bra ket notation, uh, which in which case you'd write uh, write the inner product like this. Um, I'm going to be sticking primarily with this uh, and with this notation. Um, they look very similar. They mean exactly the same thing. Just because I don't want to go into the details of uh, bra ket notation because it's really not useful for uh, most of what we're going to be doing in optoelectronics. And it greatly complicates understanding of things. Now in quantum mechanics, uh, a lot of the times these functions f1, f2, uh, I'm just going to start writing them as psi1 and psi2 because we're dealing with primarily wave functions when we want to take the inner product. Most of the time they're real. Uh, so most of the time they're real, especially when we're dealing with uh, energy eigenstates or uh, energy eigenstates or uh, wave functions that have some definite energy. But sometimes they're complex. Uh, and actually quite a bit of the time they can be complex. And we have to modify our inner product notation a little um, so instead of going from uh, minus infinity to infinity and just multiplying the two wave functions to by each other and then integrating over all space, we actually need to take uh, the complex conjugate of the first wave function. And so this is the inner product. And if this is equal to zero, then the functions psi1 and psi2 are said to be orthogonal. And so the notation for this integral, uh, we can just write as psi1, psi comma psi2. And so notice that inside this notation, there's no complex conjugation. Uh, the complex conjugation only appears inside the integral. So it's part of the definition that you have to take this psi1, take its complex conjugate, then multiply by psi2, and then integrate the thing. And if these two infinities uh, bother you, I'm sorry about that. Um, they are almost never going to be important. Like you're very rarely going to have to actually take an integral involving infinity, unless it's, for example, a decaying complex exponential. 
you want to evaluate that at infinity. So uh, these these infinities generally aren't going to cause trouble. Uh, they just are shorthand for uh, integrate over all space. Uh, so integrate over all space, or I should say all relevant uh, space. And that's going to depend on the problem. So where are your wave functions non-zero? And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.